Hello, I'm Panish Puranam. I teach at INSEAD and I want to talk to you today about building sustainable corporations. I believe what I have to say is of relevance regardless of the industry that your company might be in. Did you know how significant an impact commuting and business travel has on the environment? Just to give you a sense, imagine you travel 10 miles each way every day, five days a week, and by the end of the year, you would have added about four tons of carbon dioxide emissions to the environment. That's anywhere between one third to a half of the total impact on the environment through carbon dioxide emissions of the average person in the United States or Western Europe. Add a few long distance business trips, like from Paris to Singapore and back, for instance, and you could do the same amount of damage. My point is a very simple one. It is important, of course, to debate issues of shareholder versus stakeholder views on corporations. And that's an important ideological issue we will have to resolve, but much more immediate and much more effective in the short term might be actions we can take to improve the environmental footprint of every corporation if we only decide to reduce our dependence on commuting and on business travel. How do we do that? We do that by taking distributed work and remote working far more seriously than we have in the past. By this, I mean more than simply accepting the need to work remotely as a strategy to cope with pandemics like COVID-19. We've seen that we can do that, and we've been surprised, perhaps, that we've been able to do many of the things we thought were only possible in face-to-face -face interaction reasonably well, even in remote working contexts. But what I'm talking about here is to move beyond that attitude to really weave in remote working and distributed working into the very design, the very fabric of the organization. My colleagues and I, for several years, have been studying distributed working in software development. The reason we think software development is interesting is we think it's a bellwether. It shows us how knowledge work in general might progress. And of course, managerial work is a particular instance of knowledge work. In fact, some of our results tell us that to predict whether distributed working improves or worsens somebody's productivity, it's more important to know whether they are doing managerial work or non-managerial work than it is to know which industry they are in. Put differently, past a few levels in the corporate hierarchy, managerial work looks roughly the same across different sectors, across different industries, at least from the perspective of being able to do it remotely. In our work, we have studied various forms of remote collaboration in software development, such as outsourcing, offshoring, crowdsourcing, and of course, all remote companies which have employees distributed all over the world, and no two of them are in the same physical office. Across these range of companies that we've studied, we've learned a few important things. First, broadly speaking, we can look beyond synchronous coordination strategies, which require live interaction through video conferencing, for instance, or through phone calls in the past, to start looking at asynchronous models of interaction, where people coordinate at different times of the day, they contribute at different times of the day, but the work gets integrated because of the structure and the process that they follow. This allows organizations to utilize time zone differences very effectively and also cost arbitrage because of locational differences. So both synchronous and asynchronous techniques for coordinating distributed work have become a lot more sophisticated than they were even a few decades ago. And applying them, we feel confident, can potentially help to turn knowledge work that was done in one location, in one place, into distributed work without significant loss of productivity. Now, do we lose something by moving to this model of distributed remote work rather than the co-located model being the default? Yes, we do. We know, for instance, that coordination and trust is a lot harder to build in remote settings. That's something that seems to happen best face-to-face, -face, sitting across a table, perhaps over a drink. We also know that many of the random spontaneous encounters that happen next to the coffee machine, next to the lift in the elevator lobby, where many new ideas are born, these are just harder to replicate online. But that does not mean they are impossible. In fact, we've been studying for the last year or so, many attempts by companies to take charge of these sorts of interactions and create alternatives to them without having to force people to show up in the same place in the same time. Do we also feel sure that we wouldn't lose out too much on the sense of social connection, social interaction, the joy of sharing a joke or a cup of coffee with a colleague? Would that loss be significant or would it be something we would find acceptable? 
It's hard for me to say, but what I would say is this is a great opportunity to reflect on how precious those moments of interaction are and to use them sparingly and where they are most valuable. After all, what is at stake is nothing short of the future of our species and the viability of this planet. Thanks for listening.